Hello, and welcome to Compute 175 Python Review. In this video, we're starting with the basics, values, and types. We'll talk about expressing integers and real numbers using the int and float types, respectively. Then, we'll talk about representing text with Python's string type. Finally, we'll touch on the none value, a value that represents the absence of a result. Ints are what Python calls integers. These are positive or negative numbers without a decimal point. In Python, these numbers can have as many digits as there is memory on your computer to store them. We can do all the operations you would expect on ints. So you can do 3, add 4, subtract 9, multiply negative 34. We can divide using the double forward slash operator, such as 7, double forward slash 2. We can even do exponentiation using the double asterisk operator, such as 2, double asterisk, 128. There's one more operator I want to focus on, and that's modulo, written with the percent operator, such as 32 percent 3. Modulo returns the remainder of an integer division. This means that modulo always gives you a value between 0 and 1 less than the divisor. That's the number to the right. For example, 1 modulo 3 is 1, 2 modulo 3 is 2, 3 modulo 3 wraps around back to 0, thus 4 modulo 3 is 1 again, 5 modulo 3 is 2, and 6 modulo 3 is 0 once again. The fact that modulo wraps around is a very useful property when implementing certain data structures and algorithms, even when the problem does not require division. Let's move on to the floating point numbers, known in Python as floats. Floats are finite approximations of real numbers, that is, numbers with a decimal point. You can apply all of the expected operations on floats that you would do on ints, such as 5.0, add negative 2.4, multiply 4.9, subtract 0.2. You can also use the single forward slash operator to do a floating point division, such as 7.0 divided by 2.0. Note that Python automatically converts ints to floats when using the single forward slash for division, such as the integer 7 divided by the integer 2. In Python, ints and floats are different types. Types determine the representation of the data in the computer and what operations we can apply to that data. You can determine the type of any value using the type function. So type of 3 is an integer, whereas type of 3.0 is a float. Let's observe the types of that division once again. Type of 7 integer divide 2 is int, whereas the type of 7.0 floating point divide 2 is a float. In addition to integers and real numbers, Python allows us to manipulate text. Python calls these strings, spelt str. Strings are written using quotes on either side of the text, like so. You can use the double quotes, or you can use the single quotes to delimit strings. We can access individual characters in the string using indexing. For example, I'll practice indexing using the letters of my name. Let's try accessing the first letter, Eddie, and I'll use the square brackets to access the first letter. Wait, that's not the first letter. In Python, we start indexing strings in other sequences starting from zero. So Eddie, square brackets, of zero. Let's ask Python how many letters are in my name. I will use the len function, spelled L-E-N, of Eddie. There are five characters in my name. So, obviously, to get the last letter of the string, I ask for the fifth index, right? Eddie of five. Well, no. Python raises an error. Because we started counting from zero, the last index is the length of the string minus 1. So what I really want is Eddie of index 4. We can do other interesting operations with strings. We can see if a string is contained within another string using the in operator, like is ed in Eddie? It is. But be aware that operations on strings are case sensitive, so an uppercase E is different than a lowercase E, such as is ed, lowercase, in Eddie, capitalized. No, it's not. 
Luckily, we can convert strings into lowercase using the dot lower method, such as Eddie capitalized dot lower. So let's try that again. Is Ed in Eddie dot lowercase? Likewise, we can convert a string to uppercase using the dot upper method, such as Eddie dot upper. Another thing we can do with strings is to use the plus operator to concatenate two strings together, such as compute plus the string of 175. Let's talk about none. Sometimes it is useful to represent the absence of a value in Python. For this, there's a special value called none. Note the capital letter. When an expression returns none in the Python Interactive Console, Python suppresses the output of the result. We will be seeing the utility of none a value that represents nothingness in future videos. In this video, we saw how we can represent numbers in Python using both int and float types. We saw how we can use string to manipulate text. Finally, we learned about the none value for expressing nothingness. In the next video, we'll learn how to use variables to store the results of computations.